What's up guys, PK Outdoors here, and today I have a very special video for you all. Today we're going to be going over my entire fishing tackle bag collection. Uh, I think that there's more than a thousand pieces total in this collection, if not 1500, between beads, soft plastics, hard plastics, crankbaits, jerk baits. I got almost anything you could need, and it all fits in this handy dandy little backpack where you can take wherever you go fishing. First things first, let's go over the fishing bag itself. This is a Pisafun brand. I got it on Amazon for about $60, I believe. There's this nifty little sunglass pouch up here. Keep your sunglasses safe. It also has this top pouch where you can put some miscellaneous stuff. These are the dividers that came in the trays that you saw earlier. Uh, this bag did come with four trays, I believe. It also has this little pouch here where as you can probably tell I keep my soft plastics they all fit nicely in that pouch right here water bottle holder but I have some just miscellaneous tackle in there little pencil float and a little spinner bait and then down here I have some split shots a little bit of terminal I believe I have steel leaders down here as well so just a little bit of terminal tackle here, my stringers, uh, nothing really too exciting in that pouch. But down here uh, in this front pouch, zipper right there, I keep my Snelled hooks that are Eagle Claw primarily. And this big pouch right here, this is where you keep all those trays with all that tackle. There are little side zippers here, keep everything nice and tight and clean. Let me zip that back up partially. Then on the other side over here, a little pouch here. I sometimes throw some floats in there. This little pouch up here. Put some stuff in there. Then, of course, on this side, a little bigger pouch. Similarly divided to the other side where my split shots, but I keep my uh, line in there. So I like braid and mono line. That's where I keep that stuff. Uh, the strap's fully adjustable. I do have a little pair of forceps pinched on there. And... They even have these little grips, so when you place it down on the ground, it's not likely to fall over like some other backpacks. And you can put pliers right here on these little bands. But overall, I would highly recommend this Pisafun branded tackle backpack. It is well worth the money. I used to carry around one of those giant Plano tackle boxes, and this is leagues better than that thing. My back doesn't hurt, my shoulders don't hurt, and it can carry so much fishing gear it's unbelievable so how i'm going to organize this video is primarily by tackle type and fish type so let's say bass for example i'm going to break that into soft plastics hard plastics and i'm going to break hard plastics into uh, crank baits jerk baits uh, stuff along those lines and then terminal tackle and line and stuff like that and utilities those will also be separate sections of their own so you can skip through the video see what you want to see and uh we'll go from there so let's get this thing started Next up, we have just some utilities here. Every fisherman needs a good pair of pliers. These are Berkley, I believe. Yes, Berkley, they have fully adjustable strap, uh, line cutter there in the middle, crimpers for your split shots, and a uh, little bent plier head to get those difficult hooks out. This is also Berkley, I believe. Now it's a KVD, but a little lock right there, perfect for Right here is a braid cutter or crimping down split shots onto your line with that hooked tip. And then lastly, yet again, seems to be a Berkeley theme, but just a standard little fish scale. You never know when you might catch a big honker and you, you need to weigh it. I believe this is up to 50 pounds, as you can see there. Just clamp that down onto the fish's mouth. It has these little ridges in there so that fish will not fall off. I do have a little measuring tape to measure fish if I keep them to make sure that they're legal, but that is in my fly vest. Next up, we're going to be going over line and some terminal tackle. Uh, terminal tackle, if you don't know, are hooks, lines, sinkers, swivels, all that jazz. I do have some other terminal tackle in my other boxes, but those are more specifically related to the fish that I'm going to be fishing for. Uh, I do have some miscellaneous little jerk baits and crank baits and swim baits in here. But this box is primarily weight, so lead, 
uh, little bullet weights if you're going to be fishing a Texas rig or some bank sinkers if you're going to be going for those big carp and big catfish. Uh, I actually caught this thing while fishing. I'm not 100% sure what it's used for, but I just threw it in my box. Uh, over here are all of my snelled hooks. Uh, if you don't know, a snelled hook means that, let's see, the line is snelled around the eye of the hook. And the primary source of strength is that not around the eye, not actually through the eye. Uh, I have some standard little extra wide gap worm hooks in here. Just little bait hooks, nothing too fancy. And then here you can see I have all of the line that I have out in the water. I have 10 pound braid, 30 pound braid, and 50 pound braid. Uh, they are great main lines used uh, with uh, leader lines and tippet. If you're fishing lighter fish, you still have that strong backbone. Next up for my trout fishing, I like to run four pound vanish test on my ultralight. Uh, that line is yet to fail me and it is fantastic in the water. It's almost invisible. Uh, vanish is the only trout line that I ever really use. Also great for tying leaders and tip it onto fly line. Uh, next up I have some low vis green 10 pound test and some 17 pound vanish. Uh, I usually run those on my baitcaster setups. They have a little bit more backbone, and uh, depending on what kind of water I'm fishing, whether to choose the green or the clear fluorocarbon. Okay, now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of this little tackle tour. Uh, so this is my trout box paired with these beads over here, but we'll go, go over those later. So starting off, I love rooster tails and MEPS, as you can see. Uh, I keep my brighter rooster tails on this on the left side of this box. All those are 1 8 ounce, I believe, maybe some 1 16th in there. Uh, I also have a single hook MEPS in here, some Blue Fox Vibraxes, uh, and then some more cheaper, just knockoff spinners right there. Uh, up top here, I have my more drab little opaque colors, and then... In this container, I just have a bunch of little smaller snap swivels, and up here, a bunch of larger snap swivels. Uh, my favorite lure right here is the glitter white rooster tail. I've caught so many trout, so many steelhead on that thing. It's unreal. Uh, right here, all my Joe's flies. They're lighter, so they're going to have a more natural presentation in the water. I've come to learn that brown trout absolutely love these uh, Joe's flies, especially the yellow color. Uh, then I have my big boy MEPS over here, size 3, I believe. Yeah, MEPS Aglia, size 3. It is dressed. It is a very nice, very nice lure. Catches a lot of fish. And then we just have some soft plastic, plastic trout magnets over here, some imitation worms, and some of these bad boys that I don't ever really use. Uh, rigged up trout magnets, rigged up curly tail grubs with some uh, trout magnet jig heads. And I have this rainbow trout uh, swim bait down here that is articulated so that looks fantastic in the water when those bigger fish are feeling a little feisty then I have some light pencil floats down here adjustable little spring floats so that's it for the trout box I do have a bunch more rooster tails and uh, fly gear in my vest but that is not in my tackle bag so for this tackle tour we're just gonna stick with this box for trout Next up for trout are these hard beads. Uh, steelhead trout absolutely go crazy for these beads. The area I'm in right now, uh, Steelhead Alley, it is fantastic to have one of these little variety kits. You never know what the water might be, and each fish is going to be different to the water conditions. So if it's low and clear, you're going to want something a little bit more opaque down here. But if it's really dark and really high, you're going to want something super bright, like these flat orange beads over here and these are just little stops to put on your line so either your bead or your bobber doesn't go flying all willy-nilly on your line this next box we're going to be diving into is the bass specialty box so by specialty i mean top water or chatterbait jigs stuff along those lines uh, so top water little booyah pad crasher natural color frog right there with the hooks bent up uh, love fishing frogs there's nothing like a topwater frog bite. Then we just have some standard little paddle tail swim baits hooked onto an extra wide gap hook. Then my probably my absolute favorite combo to run for bass is the chatterbait skirted. I trim these skirts with a little dark gray and white paddle tail swim bait. 
These absolutely slam bass all year long. You've got to try them. Even when the bass are a little slow moving, these are going to induce them to have a reaction bite and they're going to get hooked. Uh, next up down here, we have some jigs. I'm not really a big jig guy. These are weedless jigs. I paired it with a little crawdad trailer. Uh, and then I just have some other standard jig heads here. I have some more up here. But once again, this is a little bit of a larger profile chatterbait, a little darker blade up there. But the vibration and the action of these bad boys is second to none. Up here, this is Old Faithful. Uh, it doesn't have hooks in it, but this frog, as you can see, has caught many, many fish and even a couple snapping turtles. That's kind of why it doesn't have hooks right now, because a snapping turtle did latch onto this and uh, stole my hooks from me. But I keep it in my tackle box just for a memoir for all the fish that this frog has been through. Yet again, another little chatterbait, but this one is without a skirt for a little bit smaller presentation. I just have this little fluke that was the trailer on that. And I think, lastly, another little chatterbait. If you can't tell, I love my chatterbaits. Love that vibration in the water. But who doesn't love a little vibration? Uh, here I just have some smaller standard. Uh, I believe these are also Booyah spinnerbaits. Little smaller presentation spinnerbaits. Catch fish. They're nice and flashy. This one's a little more naturally colored with that crawdad pattern on the side there. Then here, top water, little buzz bait. I haven't fished a lot of buzz baits, but I heard they are super fun in the summertime for that top water bite. Uh, lastly, probably some of my favorite things to fish are the Berkeley Chapo. Uh, similar to a whopper plopper, I do have a couple whopper, whopper ploppers, but not in this box. This one is rather large. I think that's, yeah, that is the Chapo 120. It's upside down. And then I believe I have a Chapo 75 in yellow perch color. That's actually a Whopper Plopper 75, but yeah, a little bit smaller profile, smallmouth bass. Love these topwater lures. And now we're going to get into some of the hard baits uh, for bass specifically, but these can also catch a variety of other fish. Fish I know I've caught a bowfin on this little rattle trap here. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that walleye would also go for these. So any predatory fish will most likely pick up one of these hard baits. Uh, I got pretty much all these other than this popper uh, in a variety pack. It was like $12 or something, and I have been catching fish on them. They are pretty reliable. The hooks are pretty bad, but if you change out the hooks on these, they're not too awful. As you can see, that hook is bent in like crazy, and I think that was just from a rock, so they are pretty flimsy hooks on these hard baits, but a little topwater popper up there, nice and bright for those overcast days. Uh, down here we have my soft plastic rigging hooks, uh, extra wide gap hooks here, belly weighted for the paddle tails, uh, some treble hooks for catfishing, some miscellaneous little spear, kind of spear point hooks down here, and then some weedless hooks for some kind of Texas rig or something along that line. And onto this box, uh, these hard plastics are a little more expensive. As you can see, this was a Guggen Squad little crankbait here. Uh, caught some solid smallmouth on this bad boy, but unfortunately the lip there was broken off on a rock from the vibration. And this is my lucky pink lure. Every fisherman, fisherwoman needs to have a lucky pink lure throwing in some uh, nice weeded areas. You never know what you, you might pull out with one of those. Uh, then some more little crankbaits down here. This one has a little rattle in it, as you can as you can hear there, uh, that's just some other standard. I think this is a KVD crankbait, have several of those. And then just this little, I believe it's a Rapala. Rapala, Rapala, I know people pronounce it different ways, but I say Rapala. Rapala little jerkbait there, little rattle trap there, a couple more crankbaits. Uh, that one's a pretty deep diving crankbait, that orange one. And then nice thing about this box, is it flips around and you have a whole other place to put hard baits. Uh, here a pretty large popper. I think this, I got this for like five bucks in the Cabela's clearance section, but has a rattle in it. Hooks aren't the best. 
Uh, similarly to these two, hooks aren't the best, but they still catch fish. A lot of action in the water. This uh, was out of one of my old tackle boxes. It's been in here for as long as I can remember. I don't think I've ever fished with it, but running triple trebles is always a risky game. And then this little, uh, I believe it's called a live target little swim bait. This thing is heavy. So I don't know what's going to be biting on this thing, but it is heavy. Probably a bass, maybe even musky. But once again, big old crankbait deep diver. And here is that whopper plopper that I was talking about earlier. This is a 90 series whopper plopper. Lovely little bait there. Perfect for top water application. And now we're going to get into the specialty soft plastics. Here I have a Ned kit variety pack. I put in a rooster tail box, but it is perfect for these Ned rig little kits. Uh, I believe there's an eighth ounce, sixteenth ounce, and quarter ounce Ned head that came in this pack, and a variety of different colors: little pumpkin green, bright green flake, bright blue flake. And this clear with blue flake. Uh, I'm not a big fan of using Ned rigs, but I know they catch fish, so if the bite is slow, I usually just throw one of these onto my spinning combo. And then the other thing we have for specialty soft plastics are these little Savage Gear, it's a Savage World Ned rigs, and they are the Ned Craws. They are just little imitation green pumpkin, black and red flake crawdads. Uh, two and a half inches, I picked these up for five bucks for four of them, so not too bad. Uh, I did lose one of them already, but they do catch fish. And last but not least, we have our soft plastics and stick baits. Uh, so here I have some sweet tater pie shimmy stick from Strike King, a little plastic Senko. And then my very last Strike King green black pumpkin, watermelon red black pumpkin. Not pumpkin, just watermelon red black. Uh, little Senko there and then I just have these little green swim baits I have a here's the watermelon green pumpkin watermelon the general from power bait and then the good old yum dinger with the bright green chartreuse tip those catch fish if you ever are looking for a good color choice either the watermelon red black or the chartreuse tip with the green pumpkin uh, next up a little creature bait these are the Christie craws they're a great little creature bait to add to a trailer for a chatter bait or something along those lines, a little weighted hook. They are awesome for that. Uh, you can even fish those with a Texas rig. Uh, similar case here, just a different color for the little creature bait. I love these little woolly bug yum creature baits. Uh, they are the ultimate craw color. Next, some super salty super fluke in white pearl from Zoom. As you can see, fast love them. I love to use these as trailers on chatter baits as well. Uh, and these have become some of my favorite things to run. Uh, this pack is full of rage swimmers and rage tail swimmers and these little shutter swimmers. So I just put all my swim baits in this one big bag and they are best used with that weighted three yacht belly hook. Uh, another creature bait up there, little craw. Uh, the bag's broken on that, but that's no biggie. And we have these little Z-Man Finesse TRDs. You can fish those as a Ned Rig, but I rarely fish them. Then we have some Slam Shadies, as per usual. And then some little lizards, I believe. Yeah, Yum Lizard Assortment. A uh, little clear and black and red flake in there. And last, but certainly not least, are Yamamoto Baits 5-inch Senko in Watermelon Red with Red Flake. Those things... Or your go-to if you're looking for a Senko, if it's not that chartreuse, you want this watermelon with red flake, it will catch fish, I promise you. Okay, y'all, I hope you enjoyed that video of my tackle tour for 2024. These are all the things I use to fish the ponds, river, streams around me. I do have a little fly vest, so if you would like to see me go through my fly uh, fishing gear and assortment, please drop a comment down below. Out of all the stuff on this table, what do you think I should get rid of? What do you think I should add to my tackle bag? And uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I shall see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.